Chef, welcome to my show. Today we're doing a fish show. Uh, I just want to show you guys some important things about fish. Um, you know, explain some different ways you do it other than what you're going to find in your typical uh, Wisconsin setting. We got the dude in the robe as always, making some tea. What's up, dude in the robe? You're not the dude in the robe! Ah! You're not the dude in the robe. Uh, no, no, you no, you're not the dude in the robe! Ah! Dude in the robe. Oh. Whew. Suppose we should go cook some stuff. Yes. <laughs> hey, what's up? I am the punk rock chef, and people have this idea of fish as your your uh, tuna in a can, and you got your you know your Wisconsin fish fry and your famous Wisconsin Door County fish boil, which is just heinous. Um, so what the dude in the robe and I are going to be doing today is showing you some different ways to prepare fish in a really fun and exciting way. So uh, let's uh, bust in the kitchen and cook some stuff. Yeah. We'll see you guys in a few minutes, all right? Yeah. All right. Well, start things off. Uh, I guess I'm going to go over what we've got already prepped out for this show. Uh, the dishes we're going to be making is I'm going to be doing a blackened catfish with a jicama relish and... Uh, the dude in the robe is going to be doing fish in papio, which translates from French into fish in paper. And it's going to steam itself. We've got some parchment paper. I don't know, maybe you guys have seen this or whatnot. This stuff is awesome. You can throw whatever you want on it and bake it in the oven and it doesn't stick. You can use it for cakes, bacon, and uh, you know, whatever else you want that you don't want to stick to a pan. Uh, some things we got prepped out for mine. For the jicama relish, I've got some jicama. I'll explain what that is in a little bit. I've got some mandarin oranges, some different bell peppers going, some jalapenos, some red onion. And for all of the doing the rope stuff, we got some tomatillos over here. So those little green tomatoes in the funny wrapper. Some red onions, jalapenos, some peppers. I've got some uh, carrot top here. Uh, some bean sprouts, some carrots, some mushrooms. And uh, we got some different fishes in the cooler, some fishes. A uh, bunch of other stuff going on. Doing the rope, what's up my friend? Right on. So uh, what I'm starting with right here now, while the dude is getting his tea, is I am julienning this jicama. What a jicama is, is this root potato looking like vegetable, and uh, it tastes kind of like an apple. Uh, it's a real starchy vegetable, root thingy. And uh, what I've done is I've peeled it, and I've taken it, and I've cut it into these slices, about an eighth inch. What I'm going to be doing it is cutting it into another eighth inch strips, otherwise known as the julienne. This is kind of a, a really bad julienne. It's alright though, I'm not being tested on it, so it's cool. And then I'm just going to cut them in half like that, and then toss them in a bowl of already ones that I've got done. The dude in the robe is doing is he's drawing a valentine, making a nice heart for his new lady friend. No, I'm just kidding. He's drawing a heart actually. He's going to be cutting it out. And this is what he's going to be wrapping the fish up in. Uh, literally what's going to happen is we're going to wrap the fish up in these papes and uh, they're going to steam with the vegetables and whatnot that we have in there with them. We drop it in there, we're going to fold it up, crimp it around, and we're drop it in the oven and it's literally just going to steam itself. Aww. Excellent. So toss that over there. Uh, some other things we got going on is we've got this marinade. I believe this is the sea bass. Sea bass in the, what we've got here is some ground up coconut, some soy sauce, like a tamari soy sauce, and some sesame seed oil. We pureed them all together, and uh, we're just soaking the fish in there, letting it uh, soak up all the juices and get all nice and tasty. We got some halibut over here as well, and I'm going to be using catfish, like I said before. I'll pull those out in a second. 
And uh, I'm just gonna start working on my relish right now. Uh, first off, I've got all this jicama. And uh, I'm actually gonna blanch this, and I'm only gonna do this for about 30 seconds in some boiling water. Just dump them in there. And I'm only gonna go for about 20 to 30 seconds. The only reason why I'm doing this is kind of softens it up and uh, brings out some more of the flavor. Alright. And then I'm going to shock it with some cold water. And this keeps it from cooking any longer and it keeps its color. Hit it with that This way I can cool it down and start working back on the relish. Get some good tosses. What was going on over with the dude is he zested a lime. That's what this is. Once again, using the zesting tool, taking off these nice strips of the outside, just the green part, not the white. Then he took off the peel, and then we've got some slices of lime here. Zesting the mandarin, or the... Uh, the tangerine, not the mandarin. Getting some of that flavor out of there. Take my jicama. Dump this in there. Excellent. Now what the dude the robot is going to be taking off the peel here. He's going to be sectioning the tangerine. The reason why they're doing the robe is taking off all this peel is because in the rind, there's a lot of bitterness. We talked about this before in the zesting, like when you get down into this white stuff that's underneath all this guy, all the pulp, it's really bitter. And uh, that's a, a texture and a flavor that you are not going to want in your uh, fish. You just want the sweetness. Excellent. Sweetness. Now I'm going to take these mandarin oranges, these little guys, you can just get these in a can, and I'm going to crush them up. Just grab them crush them. I don't want whole oranges in there. I just want the uh, just little chunks of it. They're really easy to crush. They just juice all over. Excellent. And I'm going to drop in. We got some red peppers, some orange peppers and yellow peppers. Lots of color. Drop those guys in. Got some red onion. Got some big pieces I don't want. Nice. Got a jalapeno. And I'm going to take some lime juice. Once again, it's good to uh, drop the juices in at an extreme height for uh, maximum flavor delivery. Just kidding. It's actually just useful for getting a lot of the tea. Dude in the Robe has a mango right now. And he's taking off the peel, once again, because he do not want to eat it. And then he'll be removing the stone in the center. There's a large pit that is impossible to chew Drop some more juice in. Stone. Toss it away. Cutting into thin slices, showing us mad knife skills. Mm, this is already smelling great. nice and tossed. Excellent. And I've uh, saved a little bit of the mandarin orange juice. I'm just add a little bit of the flavor. That won't get served up with it, but uh, it would be nice to have in there. Doing the robe, eating some mango. Ah, thank you, baby. Excellent. Mangoes are so good. Camera guy, would you like a mango? Oh. 
Excellent. I'm gonna drop this guy in the fridge. I got it how I want. I'm just gonna let it. Uh, <laughs> gonna let it marinate for a while and just uh, soak up all the juices of each other and meld. All right. So I've got some uh, rice here. I've got some butter in there. He's kind of covered up with the rice. Just some brown rice. I think brown rice goes nicely with this fish, especially mine, since mine's kind of a Caribbean dish. And I'm uh, gonna drop kind of a rule of thumb. If you're not gonna measure like I'm not. About twice as much water as you've got rice in there. Right about there. Drop it on there and turn it on. Radio. So I guess we should uh, start wrapping up some fish now. Uh, what we're using is paper towel soaked with some grapeseed oil. And uh, we're just going to, using that as a brush. We don't have a pastry brush here, but you... Uh, you know, just improvise, man. Getting that nice and coated so nothing yeah. sticks. Coating that with oil? Coating that with some uh, grapeseed oil. You can use olive oil if you want. You can use vegetable oil. We've got the halibut here. And we've got the, uh, the coated uh, parchment paper with some grapeseed oil. Dropping some of those limes on there without the rind. Some bell peppers. We've got some orange and red and yellow suckas. We've got some jalapenos. Lots of color, man. This is very colorful. And what's going to happen, essentially, this is like a paper burrito. Uh, we got the mango. Oh, man. This is, uh, it's going to be a paper burrito sort of thing, yeah, except we won't eat the paper. Uh, just folding it up, and what's going to happen is all these flavors are going to lock together, and they're just going to start rocking out with each other. We got going on here is some creasing on the outside. Taking the edge, stuff, make sure nothing's sticking out. So we're uh, just kind of folding it on top of stuff. It's kind of like, almost like a little twist, like a one twist over with each thing. And uh, just keep wrapping up, and if you see it, it's kind of looking like a funnel now. It's just gonna wrap all the way around. And we're gonna do a whole bunch of these. We're gonna do some of those with the, uh, the sea bass as well. A bunch of different flavors. And uh, we're gonna drop them in the oven, and what's gonna happen is they're gonna steam themselves. The, the moisture from the vegetables are gonna start steaming into the fish, and the moisture from the fish is gonna start steaming into the vegetables. And it's just like a, a, a mini paper pressure cooker. It's just gonna steam everything, everything's gonna rock out. It's gonna be sweet. All right, there's your uh, fish in Papio. Let's make another one. We'll show you how to do this one more time. Now we got sea bass that's been marinating in the coconut and the sesame oil. Coat the paper with the oil. We got some bok choy. Picked up all these ingredients at Cop Supermarket, man. They have a phenomenal produce section. Uh, we had a, a menu in mind and we went there thinking we wouldn't be able to find some of the things that we wanted to do. And we walked in there and man, they had everything. So uh, when you're going at these recipes, go to Cops, man. They have the best produce section in uh, the town for sure. So we got the bok choy. We got some of the tangerine. Having a brain fart there. Dropping some bean sprouts. And some carrot. Some shiitake mushrooms. You guys have seen these before. We use these during the salute to bacon. Yeah. A very pretty piece, man. This is just such a beautiful looking dish. Super exciting. Be sure to uh, keep checking on your rice, give it a stir every now and then. A spoon, you can use one of those if you want. I don't care. And once again, we're wrapping it up. Make sure it's all tight in there. Just grab it down from the corner on the first fold, bring the corner up. Nice crease. Pull this down for the dude. Boy, dude, I was having the funniest stream before, man. Uh, <laughs> came into the kitchen and there was this weird guy with a meat cleaver. And, whew, freaking me out, dude. So uh, I'm glad you're here, buddy. Well, the dude in the robe is working on his origami fish project here. I'm going to start making uh, the seasonings for my blackened catfish. Got to grab a pan here. Uh, something kind of, you know, small, deep, whatnot. 
And uh, I'm gonna be dumping some spices in here. We've got we've got some whole allspice here. That's a key ingredient in uh, Jamaican and Caribbean foods. Uh, it's it's really bright, kind of like cloves, but uh, a little more. I think a little more colorful. Uh, that's a key thing. And uh, we're throwing in some whole cloves. Actually, a whole clove. Uh, this is really, really strong, and I don't want it to uh, overpower stuff. That'd be bad. Dropping these into the mortar and pestle. Uh, we're taking some pepper. Lots of pepper. And some uh, roasted cumin or toasted cumin. We did this in uh, the Mexican show, the Mexican fiesta. And like what I said before is you just take some cumin seed. Uh, yeah, right here. Just some of these guys. And you drop them in a dry skillet and you roll them around on like a medium heat. And uh, just wait till the, the whole room fills with this uh, this just orgasmic odor. Uh, that's when you pretty much know they're done. Then you drop them in something and uh, you crush them up. Drop that in there. Save a little bit for the dude. I think he said he wanted some. Got some salt. And I'm gonna start grinding on this right now to uh, get that stuff chopped up before I start anything else. Yeah. Do this. Oh. Oof. Man, everything's just going great. All right. Some key ingredients in this blackening stuff. Also, some cayenne pepper. Quite a bit. But yeah. Um, a little bit of thyme leaf. This is uh, dried herbs again. We already got the salt. Got everything else in there. Oh, and I'm gonna throw some uh, some carrot top. We got these car carrot tops. Where we uh, got some fresh carrots. The top's still on them. And what we do is we just pull off some of these leaves, and I chopped them up real fine. We're dropping some of that in there. Let's just start rocking those together again. Give them a stir, get everything nice and mixed together. Excellent. Oh yeah, that smells really great. I think I'm going to add a little bit more salt to it, a little more pepper. Alright, fill that over there. We got, yeah, I think that's pretty much all I want to give her right now. Mix that up again. And I'm going to dump this into this pan. You know, this will coat four or five pieces probably. It doesn't have to be like super thick like you're making a a batter for deep frying fish or whatnot. Ready oh well we've got all the fish wrapped up now. Thank God. Uh, a little timely process, but it's all right. Uh, we've got them all wrapped up, ready to rock. And the deal with these is they've got to go in the oven for 12 minutes. And then no longer, no less. And as soon as they're out, we got to serve those suckers. So we're going to let those sit there for a little bit. And we're going to let some of those flavors mac with each other. And uh, I'm going to start blackening this catfish. So cut up a few pieces here. Um, this is catfish fillets. I got these at Cops, and there's no skin on these. You can uh, ask for the skin to be removed. I think most of the time they come with the skin removed, actually. But uh, if you're catching your own catfish down in Mississippi or whatnot, uh, and you're gonna want to remove the skin. Just drive a nail through that sucker's head, make a little slit, and just peel that sucker right off. It's all right, you know. It's all punk. Whether you're down home or up here, so I'm gonna take the fish, drop it on top. Drop it like that, a little shake, drop it to pieces. Uh, like I said, we got the allspice, the clove, some cinnamon in there I threw in, uh, lots of salt, lots of pepper, a um, little bit of thyme leaf, cayenne pepper up the butt. Since it's a dry skillet, you don't want everything to stick to it, I'm going to actually drop a little bit of grapeseed oil, just a little bit to give it a coating. Pour a little oil in there and just drop those suckers in there. You can hear them sizzle. Move that oil. 
oil around a little bit. Ready on. And uh, what you're looking for this is not your typical golden brown kind of color. It's going to be black, hence the term blackened. Uh, <coughs> it's a... Uh, it's a, I don't really know how to describe it. It's, it's a real dark flavor, yet it's a really bright, crisp flavor. Uh, I don't know if any of you had anything blackened. You can blacken almost anything. You can blacken chicken. Fish is really popular blackened. Check this guy out. And uh, the fish is actually not going to cook on all the way through in the pan. Uh, then it would get too blackened, and that's the term we call, I think the French call burnt. Yeah. So uh, you're going to want to throw these in a, on a pan. You got a pan right here. Put some plastic in there. Plastic is <laughs> good seasoning. And let's check this guy. Yeah, nice blast. <laughs> I do it to myself every show, man. <laughs> we always got something going in this freaking small kitchen. I'm just going to be dying in. Anyway, got to keep on posting. Uh, punk rock, how you handle this crap? Blackening. Yeah, that's what you want to get right there. This is looking peachy. <laughs> Alright, we're dropping in the, the dude in the ropes fish. 12 minutes in this sucker, uh, 425 the oven's at. And then we're dropping in my catfish up on the top, uh, let it finish off. We got the rice cooked, we got the fans blowing. Uh, I removed the skillet from the house, so clean it up a little bit now. I'm getting ready to plate up our dishes. I've got some limes right here. Take these limes, and I'm gonna just, uh, Cut them into some quarters. Drop some rice down on the pan. Thanks, dude. I'm just going to drop those in this little side compartment here. These are uh, for people to uh, squirt on top of their fish. We got four minutes, almost 420 on the uh, clock there. Almost. And uh, I'm going to grab this relish out. Oh, God, that looks great. Nice. Got some tomatillos, those little green tomatoes I was talking about before. Chop them up. Right on top of the rice. Excellent idea, my friend. Scatter those around a little bit. Got some of those bell peppers. Right around the edge, that'll look real nice. This is good. What the dude in the robe is illustrating here is the waste not, want not thought. Go ahead. Garnish with what you got left over. Uh, you can save it. Man, like we could take these, throw them in a bag, chop them up, throw them in a bag, and after the dude in the robe and uh, his numerous lady friends come over the next morning, you can make us some omelets, you know? We got some shallots there. And some mango. Which actually go really nice with the relish that I'm going to put on top of the catfish. Yeah. Improv cooking. It's the best. So uh, now we're just chilling, waiting for this uh, stuff to cook. Finally, I can start breathing normally in this kitchen. Uh, once again, I'm just a little warning here with this extreme punk rock cooking. Uh, some of you may not want to uh, try this at home. Oh, I think this catfish is done. And I'm going to go ahead and just break a few of these pieces up. Dropping this on top of the rice. Just drop it all on there. 
No need to be super uh, neat with it. People are just gonna devour it anyway. With some of the relish. Yeah. Ready, y'all. I'm gonna take the rest of it. I'm gonna bring this out with me, but I'm gonna take the rest of it and uh, strain some of that juice out just so that people can get at it a little better. I don't know, you can maybe uh, save that juice and make some WAP out of it, some uh, really hardcore WAP, but whatever, probably shouldn't. Garnish it with some of the uh, carrot top that we had. And that's mine right there. Now we've got seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fish is ready. All right, if you notice, they're all puffed up right here. And the reason why that is because we have an excellent seal going around. And by sealing them, the steam collects in the inside of the bag and it just starts uh, mosh pitting in there, literally. It's just rocking everything out and cooking it really thoroughly. We're going up. Oh, yeah, they're ready to rock. Woo! We're just uh, going to throw these on the plate like this and we're going to let people dig at them. Move these up so we can fit them all on there. See, they're all puffy like that. That's all you want, the nice balloon to keep the steam in. Excellent. Uh, I got mine. He's got his. We're ready to rock. Oh. With a leanness of meaning. <laughs> uh, <laughs> bordering on. <laughs> we got your oh, fish. Dad. We got your oh, fish right holy. here. Wow, man. This oh, is just yeah. extravagant. Ah. Despite what the PA announcement says. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we got the blackened catfish with the jicama relish. We got some extra relish for you guys. Uh, on top, some brown rice garnish with a bunch of leftover crap. Yeah. And we got the fish and papio, which is that paper steam burrito like oh. fish kind of thing. Oh, uh, man, wow. if you can get a shot in here, camera guy. Oh. Look at the colors of that. Oh, oh. yeah. Just pure uh, punk rock flavor. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's the best. <laughs> what are you guys watching? A punk testimonial. Rock. A testimonial. Oh, I'm Mark. What, what show is this though? Punk Rock punk Chef! Rock oh, show. it's the Punk Rock Chef! What do you know? <laughs> hey! Hey! hey. hey. Excellent. I'm gonna get in here and eat some of this food because uh, after gassing myself out, I'm pretty hungry. So, uh, be sure to tune in next week when we're gonna do a, uh, a, like an Indian food kind of show. Uh, for now, this is the Punk Rock Chef saying let's cook something. Alright, guys, stay in. You want a second time? Sweaty. <laughs> <laughs>